hello. I don't know how many people are going to be watching this live today, but we're doing, we're expanding. It's not that we're doing something different. We're expanding the literature that we look at because I think poetry is an important part of the canon of black literature. Yes. So today we have Naima Nur, is that her correctly? Naima Nur of Sunsong joining us. She's going to be doing a poem. Actually, she can she can go over. I have races, so I mispronounce everything. So I'm just going to bring her in, and she's going to take it over from here and do a reading and discuss the importance of this poem. And, you know, maybe she'll return if you guys like this. Uh, thank you for joining. Great. Um, so this poem is called um, Entezanti Shange, and it's by Kalami Salam. He wrote this poem um, as a response to the backlash that Ntozaki Shange was getting from black men for writing for colored girls. Um, and he said that this poem put him at an opposition um, with his fellow male writers. And he said that he was cool with that because he likes confrontation. So uh, I'm going to read this poem. Um, it's called Ntozaki Shange. To those who wish she would shut up. One. If your life had happened to a man, the whole world would have known about it. But you, a big legged woman, breaking the monopoly of male writers, talking bold about what has kept you from walking off the ledge of life, and what drove you out the window in the first place, about to silently hit the sky falling like a drop drumstick during the middle of the big number. Two, talk about yourself, your black woman self, neo-African in the midst of a land caught up in worshiping 20th century minstrels. Talk about womanness and exaltation and never, never uttering the lie about being sorry not to be born a boy. Talk like you think, like you feel, like you move through decaying urban America, past past fashions, kitchen recipes, modern romances, and mythical holy vaginal orgasms. Talk like our Moses is spake in the middle of a heading north night, pressing a slack-jawed man who couldn't keep his pants dry. Once we get started, ain't no turning back. Talk, that, talk like that little sister, can't remember her name, who shot hot breath all up in a white boy's face and double dared him to fuck with her in the hallway in class after school on the bus or any other goddamn time. Back in 1958, in one of their schools, when at the time you did good just by staying proudly black and defiantly sane. Talk like you an oracle, bearing witness to changing times or the sphinx, sphinx sitting on the secret in the desert. Not only was you black, but yes, possibly you were a woman. When Napoleon saw that, he barked the order for his battery of cannons to commence and left pad of your nose and a piece of lip pulverized and floating a dusty cloud towards the Nile. Talk that talk when the truth is revealed to the, to the light. The shysters will all scream, ain't fair. They'll cry foul. Say your strikes smoking clean down the middle are misses. Say you high or low or wide and you got spit on the ball. You see, you just ain't allowed on the mound. And there you are talking like you ain't never heard of being quiet and pretty in the bleachers. Talk, Shange. Talk like a lioness putting her jaw around a jackass's throat. Three, to some men, the sound of black woman's song is noise. But no matter, many of us are dancing anyway. And in time, most of us will all be waving red bandanas and shouting, amen, amen, sister, amen. Well, well, um, Kalami Salam. So this poem, I really uh, love this poem because we usually don't see black male poets write about black women in a way that's just not like, that's like celebratory of the black woman. That's like a woman that's not romantically involved with them, a woman that's not their sister or mother. Um, and this is like someone he admired. And at the time she was writing about black women's struggle and not just the struggle in like the world, but their struggle specifically with a, a black men. Um, and so I really like that he came not only to her defense, but also was like speaking of her so, so proudly. Um, and Ntozaki Shange's For Colored Girl, that's one of the main plays that she's known for. Um, that was like really controversial. And now we look at it and we just think of it as this really big, important piece of work in the canon. But at the time, it was like super controversial um, at, during, the black, um, during the Black Arts Movement a lot of the prominent people in the black arts movement were black women and what they struggled with is like writing experiences that were true to themselves but then about the black struggle but then also recognizing that they're at this intersection of being women and also being black 
and that that comes with multiple different struggles and so there is a conflict with like you're fighting the white man but also you have to deal with misogyny even within your own community and that was really hard for a lot of writers to speak about and they bravely spoke about it um and so there was not a lot of black male writers who were in defense of in defense of these black women authors um so i really like that kalami salam stick took his neck out for women and it shows that like men can do that and they should do that um so that's why i really like this poem and also it puts like texture to the past like we we sometimes don't know about all the inter um the things that were going on in these community in the communities we only see this aftermath which is like oh this poem is like glorified it's talked about it's you know remade but at the time we didn't know that like it was actually a super controversial poem so I mean, super controversial play. So I like that this kind of adds texture to that. Um, and so that's why I chose it. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to see what you guys think about it and your discussions on this poem. All right. All right, y'all. Thank you.